think his actual age is about 23. Yes, but... And his film age is about out. seven. <laughs> no, I think he's progressed a little bit. We just broke the cut. Woman shot. I can hear her voice. His. His voice. So tell me, why time travel? <laughs> Ever since I was seven years old, I've always been a little obsessed with time travel movies. It was about that age when I first saw Back to the Future. It may be the film I've seen most times in my life. It's such a great film. The idea of seeing events that happened when you didn't even exist yet is fascinating to me. Simple concept. What were your parents like when they were your age? I'd love to see what they were like. It really occurs to me sometimes that I have no idea who they are. So I grow up watching the Back to the Future trilogy, Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure, The Terminator, Time Cop, Superman the Movie, Twelve Monkeys, Flight of the Navigator. I get to my late teens and probably due to drinking, my friends and I start to think quite seriously about time travel theory in movies. Well, but if you can, if you could go faster than the speed of light, harder. then you'd be going back in time. It's a lot harder, but you we could just try pressing. We could, we could <laughs> pressing rewind. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's hear it Owen's theory, but it isn't about time travel. And that everyone has a set the number of heartbeats, it's just how much, sure. yeah, how many heartbeats you have. Yeah, so like a sparrow, yeah. Yeah, it's like, the heartbeat's quite fast, it doesn't live very long. Three. Elephant, heartbeat slowly. Well, no, I don't believe time travel is actually possible or, pro or will be. But, you know, it's just kind of fun to think about it. And that's why all these, like, uh, rock and roll stars from the like, 60s are dying, because they took loads and loads of speed. Yeah. The heartbeat yeah. increases, using up all their heartbeats, die at the age of 50. Is that true? No. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, of course time travel is worth being interested in, otherwise, you know, I wouldn't be interested in it. See, my multiple, look, my multiple timeline theory goes that if you travel, if you're changing the timeline, then you're creating a new dimension, yeah? Yeah, Yeah, and if you're creating a new dimension, that means you have to travel between those two dimensions. Yeah. And if you're travelling between the two dimensions, that means there has to be a gap or something in between. We're talking about Rick being a twerp. Of course. He is, he is a twat because he always talks about time travel at parties. You travel back, you're not like going between two dimensions, you're actually literally creating one. Every single party we go to, it's like Max Planck this, Albert Einstein that. And he's got no idea. Who's Max Planck? The top and water, the bottom or wherever. I know in, in real life, okay, uh, it's, it's great. You get real stuff all the time, and there's nothing wrong with real things, you know, some of my greatest memories of real stuff. <laughs> okay, maybe not, but... It's essentially in a twang. He doesn't no, mean to no, be. No, it just happens. It's just his natural persona coming yeah. out, that's not some really he's not, he's not, he doesn't mean. Long. So, essentially, there are these two theories that work, right? The fixed timeline theory and the multiple timeline theory. Yeah. Wait, I don't get this fixed timeline theory. What? Well, the fixed timeline theory states that when you travel into the past, you're traveling into your own past, the one you've already lived, and so, you know, you can't change anything because it's already happened. You travel back to the future, you become, you know, it's, it's all kind of circular, you know, and there can't be any paradox because you can't change anything because it's already happened, it's already planned out. Why not? Okay. Imagine a man walking down a street. Suddenly, he notices himself walking on the other side of the road.
he rushes back home and uses his time machine. He travels back in time a few minutes and walks out of his house. He has now become the alternate version that he saw a few minutes ago. And if he decides to stop himself from reaching the time machine, Yeah, but the bad thing about that theory is the fact that, you know, something will always happen to stop you changing the past. That means you've got to kind of rely on a, 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 or believe in a higher power, a god or a Christian god or something. Yeah, the you know. universe is a, as a higher power. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's all that fake crap, it's really restricting. But don't they change stuff from back to the future? Yeah, well, that's exactly, that, that's where multiple timeline theory comes in. Okay, with this theory, right, you've got past and future. When you travel to the past, okay, you don't travel to your own past, you travel to this alternate dimension. What? Why? Well, because, you know, if you imagine your own kind of timeline, when you, when, you know, you, you went back, if you went to go see yourself, but, you know, in your own past, you didn't, your future self didn't come and visit you, right? So if you do travel back in time, it has to be to this, like, alternate version where you did appear back in time and visit yourself. So every time you travel back in time, you're just constantly going into this alternate universe, and it's not affecting your, um, your original history, your, your original timeline, so there's no paradox. You see? Simple. Exactly. Yeah. Do you see? Right. And this is the theory that I kind of really believe in. I mean, there's no real holes in it at all, but thinking about it, you know, a few problems can arise. Like what? Okay, a married couple are attacked one evening. The wife is stabbed and killed. Years later, the man has created a way to go back and stop it from happening. He travels back to that fateful night and stops the attack. He watches as he and his wife walk off together. He gets back in his time machine and returns to his own time. He walks to his house excited at the fact that his wife must now be alive. But as he looks through the window at his wife in the present, unharmed, he also sees himself there. He thinks, in this new timeline that was created, there was no murder. He had no reason to create the time machine and therefore is happy with his wife. He can never return to his own universe. He can never go home. And the more he travels back and forth in time, the more alternate versions of himself are created. He would obviously have no choice but to live a life as a solitary, travelling from time to time. Probably helping the helpers. Maybe driven by an unknown force to change history for the better. Most of these movies, you know, use multiple timeline theory, but they all get it wrong. Look, look at this bit in Back to the Future, okay? Want to see that photograph again of your brother? Just as I thought. This proves my theory. Look at your brother. See, it's good. 
It's like it's like it's been erased. Erased from existence. You see? Now he brought that that photo back from the future, and he's kind of saying that you know when you change something in the past. Yeah, your own history is changed by, you know, the changing of the photo, you know, which is, as we know, is wrong in that real multiple timeline theory. Then we got this bit in uh, Time Cup, where the good guy, Jean-Claude Van Damme, kicks a young version of bad guy in the face, and then the older version, who has travelled back in time also, suddenly Scar just magically appears from out of nowhere. Ridiculous. They were just getting it wrong. But the thing is, you know, filmmakers did use these theories in their films. The films would be so fucking depressing that all the heroes would, you know, realise that time travel is utterly futile and totally screw up their lives. Movies have to have happy endings, you know? They're a place you can go to to get away from things. A lot of it was to do with like, the like superhero type comic characters and that sort of thing. Didn't and that was when he was seven. Yeah. And and now, 14, 15, 16 years later, no change like, really. I think it's more than 16 years later actually. The maths is very good. I don't know. <laughs> How old are you, son? <laughs> How old am I? This is it. How old is he exactly? I mean, he'll never be the age he's supposed to be. He's, he's our Peter Pan, isn't he? Hello? What? Oh, yeah, it's uh, eight o'clock. Wait a minute. Doc, are you trying to tell me that it's 8.25? Damn, I'm late for school! <laughs> Reality doesn't really touch him. Reality doesn't touch him. You know, if you go into a kind of dream world, fantasy kind of thing in your imagination, you get to do whatever you want, you know? I get to run after and catch ghosts. I get to take a few running leaps and soar up into the sky, if I wanted. I get to travel through time if I want. Now with multiple timeline theory, a time traveller isn't just escaping his own time, he's escaping his whole universe. And I know, in, in real life, I'm going to have to face growing up and all the responsibilities that come with it, even if I am terrified of it. But just slipping into a dream world every now and then, just kind of tends to push back adulthood a bit. I'll grow up in my own time. <laughs>